Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk a little bit about Grafana, Prometheus and the Ceph cluster that is using these metrics in order to know more about how the state is of your hard drives, your CPUs and other things in your different machines in your cluster. In this video, I'm going to go through how to set up the different services and how to configure them correctly. And this was something that I wanted to do in my home closed cluster because I didn't have any metrics in it. And I had installed that manually from scratch. So I knew there were some components that were not enabled and not configured correctly. And by doing this, I can also learn how to configure things correctly in our cluster at work. So this is a gain gain situation. I get some more knowledge and I also can help out and get a good setup in our work cluster. So if we switch over to our screen here, you see my little cluster. This is my home network. Uh, there, This is where I save all the YouTube content, for instance, and some other stuff. But this is something that I have some a test bed that I can change over time and try things out, but it's still used. So you, I can see some usage to it, but it's not super important if it uh, gets destroyed. So let's see here. We have screen where, where you have the metrics for the standard Ceph console. Nothing strange there. If you go over to host here, you can see which host I have installed and which services they have. I think it's a little bit strange that the MDS for node 3 here is not visible, but I have one running, so I'm not really sure what's uh, happening there. But if we go to overall performance here, we see that we get some metrics here. I know something about my four hosts. They have an average uh, CPU users of around 5% and they have an average RAM utilization of 84% and I know that they are RAM constrained. They only have four gigs RAM of RAM and they need to use that constantly pretty much to handle the load of the uh, hard drive. And we also have some physical ops and disk utilization is not <laughs> happening at the moment. So that's NA. And I think if we um, can take the last 30 days perhaps. No, still no utilization. Man. That's pretty much because I haven't used the cluster since I installed Grafana service and so on. But if you go to this page and you haven't installed anything, this iframe that you see here will not load. You will get a documentation link how to set up Grafana services. And that's pretty much what I followed. And the documentation is not super great and or perhaps it's just me being dense and not understand it correctly. But I had to go through and find different resources and gather the knowledge and do a lot of work in order to get this to function. And uh, I wanted to create a video so you don't need to do that. Um, so we go over to my little script here on uh, how to set this up. So uh, if we look here, I have a long script of things to do. Let's start here first with the Prometheus. On the first uh, node here, I will start by enabling the Prometheus um, little plugin here or the manager mod module. And I say which port it should use. So I pretty much say, I want to manage here, here where Prometheus can gather information from you, you Ceph cluster. So the manager could give Prometheus information about the cluster. Then we want to install the node exporter. A node exporter is to take the node and send all the usage statics over to the server uh, or the, graph, the Prometheus server can fetch that information. So this will gather CPU information, hard drive information, memory utilization and so on. And you just pack, unpackage that, you install that to your system, just copy it over like this. You need to install Gozu and uh, create a new Prometheus user. And then you say that that specific script should use uh, be uh, owned by Prometheus. 
and Gozo is used in that script in order to run it, so therefore you need to install that. And then I uh, vi into the node exporter script here, and this is pretty much this script. It's a, a script for starting services. So this I just copied in there. Uh, depending on which service you want to start, there is a couple of these scripts available on their GitHub page. I will leave links to everything of this in the video description. Um, but you copy that in so you can um, start this script. I see mod that script and then put it into the defaults so it will start when the machine starts. And then I uh, also need to edit this default node exporter so if we look at that um, we will put the value start equals to yes in that little script uh, so it will start on boot up and then I start the node exporter I check that it's running and then I also check the log and I don't get any issues and or if you are on a so, uh, on um, if you are on a node that has the possibility to send commands to your Ceph cluster, you can already now uh, put in this little command here and say that I want you to set the API SSL requirement to false if you don't want to do SSL. If you are able to put in a an SSL certificate and everything into Grafana. I've not done, done that on my home cluster, but if you have that op opportunity, do so, and then you can use HTTPS here instead. And then you just set up, this is the URL to my Grafana server, and that will put in these uh, little iframes in your uh, Ceph cluster um, dashboard. An important part here is the organization ID. You need to have that in there. It's usually set up on port 3000. If you choose another port, then you of course need to set something else there. But that's pretty much everything you need to do on the node. Then we need to install Grafana. That's not that complicated either. We need to install some prerequisites. Uh, add user you usually have already in the system but the lib uh, font config might be missing. Then we download this Debian package and you can find the latest uh, enterprise package on their server and then do a package install of that. And then I need to edit the Grafana INI uh, in order to set up some variables. And my Grafana server is an other server than the nodes I chose to use one of the other machines behind me uh, in order to have my Grafana on so the nodes can focus on what their workload and I could put Grafana on a server that doesn't do that much. And in this case uh, we can set up which uh, default theme you want. I have set light at the moment. The dark theme doesn't really look that great in um, in the GUI. We can, we can try it out if we want. Uh, so, history here. Let's see if we can find restart. We should have on 589 there. So if we restart the Grafana server and go back to the GUI here and then reload this, um, we should get the dark instead. And I don't think this looks as good in the GUI here. I usually like the dark theme, but then I would like Ceph to be in a dark mode as well. I'm not sure if you can do that. Uh, no, it doesn't really look like we can do that in our dashboard. So that doesn't really look that nice, but that's something that you can choose as well. Then we need to uh, enable anonymous uh, access so we can show the graphics uh, without logging in. And then we can set an org uh, name for the, our organization. The role in this case is a viewer. So you cannot change the data there. You can only view the data there. And if you have a certification file, you put it in here and then you will be able to run HTTPS. I don't have those files, so I don't have any certificate, uh, certificate at the moment. Then you put a domain, a protocol, and that, there you put HTTPS if it's uh, if you have those keys. 
a port number and the address to the server. And then I have security admin user and password and those are only used the first login. So after that you will uh, get the possibility to add new login information. So I have a different password at my Grafana instance at the moment, but that's good to have as a first startup thing. And then you allow embedding and that's so you can have these iframes and also allow origins so uh, you don't have any problem with the uh, course. And that's all that you need to uh, put into this Grafana script. Uh, one thing I had a problem with here is that this uh, Ceph console is running in an unsecure HTTPS session. So I don't have any certificate, but it's still an HTTPS session. And if you go to HTTP in an HTTPS session, that's mixed content, not allowed. So I had to go in for this site and allow mixed content. If you set up this up in a production environment, you will not have that problem because you should use SSL on everything. So that should not be a problem. Let's go back here to the script. And then we just enable this Grafana server and start it. It's not much to that. Um, if you have the problem that I had, I logged in, I forgot my new password and I just put in a generated password and then that password got lost somewhere and you need to reset your admin password. Then you can run this Grafana CLI home path to the Grafana instance it is usually installed in usr share grafana and then you say i want for the admin user reset admin password to admin and then you can log in again and set new password so that could be good if you do uh, or clumsy like me and set a password that you forget and after that we want to install prometheus and grafana creates graphs show you nice things and prometheus is the server that handles all the data collection. So in, in this case, we need to install Guso again. On the same, I use the same server for my Prometheus setup as I use for my Grafana setup. Uh, so I need to install Guso here as well. And then we add the Prometheus uh, user. We create some directories for the configuration and the libraries and we set the user as the owner of those. We unpack the current version of Prometheus, and then we will just copy in some tools into the USR local bin directory. We will copy over all the um, console and console libraries to the Etsy uh, directory, and we also will uh, copy over a YAML file uh, will will be there. <laughs> we will have a YAML file there and that YAML file need to have the Prometheus. Um, I think we will edit that uh, first and then we will set the right uh, permissions to that. So we could probably do uh, like this and say that the whole directory should have uh, this Prometheus as an owner. And if we edit this script Go back here to my uh, node. Here we say what services should we scrape information from. And in this case we have all the nodes and their plugins in the Ceph cluster. And those are on port uh, 9283. And then we have the same nodes and all their uh, node exporters for the CPU information, the memory information and so on. And those are on 9100. Uh, so that's the scraping that we need. We could also install Prometheus on all these nodes and then export that information as well. I have put it in here. It's not used at the moment because I don't have Prometheus installed on all these services and you don't need to have that. But I just wanted to show that you can scrape information from other Prometheus instances as well. 
So you could have a large cluster where some are scraping from uh, different services and then also sc uh, scraping from other Prometheus. So you gather it up the chain in some kind of three, tree if you like. So that's the Prometheus set up there and we will uh, continue here and edit the script as well. And that, there we will also have this init script that can start Prometheus. It's pretty much the same thing. It's a startup script and it's also available by, via link. And then we will set it executable and do the thing which we did, the same thing we did with a node. After that, we need to install some plugins to the Grafana CLI that will be used by the Grafana dashboard. So these are important. Um, the, we have the Grafana pie chart that we will use and we also have the Vonage um, status panel. So those plugins we will install here. Next up, we will install some dashboards. And if you want, we can now go over and look at the... Uh, so here we have the Grafana dashboard. And if we want, you could go in here and import and create a new dashboard using JSON files. And Ceph has created a bunch of uh, these pre-made dashboards as JSON files. You can import them here. And that means that if you have a Prometheus server uh, connected to this one, so if we go to data sources here, I can set up a Prometheus data source and say you should look at this specific address then you can just import these different uh, dashboards and it will show data from that and uh, you see here that I have a bunch of these set up we have a dashboard a dashboard one and a Prometheus this dashboard one is the one that is default at the moment and uh, I will come to that later but you, you can do that in here but then you are not sure that your Ceph cluster will actually pick up those um, dashboards and show them in the GUI. So this is the way to do that setup correctly. And it took a while for me to figure that one out. So if we go back here, we can first off create this directory, Grafana dashboards, Ceph da dashboard. And then we go into that directory and we download all these JSON files here. And these are the cluster um, overview for file system, the cluster overview, the host details and host overview and so on. So the, these are all the dashboards that you see in Ceph. We download those as JSON and put them into that directory, the dashboard directory. And then we'll create this uh, directory here, provision dashboards, and we will create this Ceph dashboard uh, YAML. So if we go back to our node here, we can go into uh, Prometheus, uh, Grafana dashboards. Uh, first off, go there. So here we have the Ceph dashboard, so here we have all the JSON files that I've downloaded. If we go into provision, we have a bunch of directories here. The important ones are dashboards and data sources. So if I go into the data sources here, here you can configure data sources as we did earlier. So here I have configured with API version one, a data source for organization one that will be deleted on startup. And then we have dashboard uh, one, Prometheus, proxy access, organization one, and then the URL that it should pick up all information from. So Prometheus uh, will scrape and hold the information and we will fetch that from the local Prometheus server here. And then no basic uh, authentication to that one. It is the default one and it's not editable. So this is the way uh, you can define your own dashboards if you like, or your own data sources. So data source one, uh, dashboard one, that you saw in the GUI is defined this way. And if we have a data source uh, defined and we go into dashboard, uh, dashboards, 
and we check the Ceph dashboard. Here we can say that I want something called a Ceph dashboard. It should be in the folder Ceph dashboard and that's important because else it will not find it. And then you give it the path to where your dashboards are available on disk. And that will create the different dashboards in your uh, Grafana setup. And it's not editable, it's a type of file and organization ID and so on. If you restart your Grafana server with this configuration, it will create a bunch of new dashboards. So we go back to the Grafana here, we go to the uh, overview. We see here that we have a bunch of them that is in the category dash, uh, Ceph dashboard host overview. Make this a little bit bigger. So you see here host overview da Ceph dashboard. But I also have a bunch that is just called host overview and don't have this um, information on wh where they actually, which folder they are in. So there are they, these here is not used. Those are ones that I created and they will show the same information here, but they can't be found by our Ceph cluster. To, uh, so Ceph will only look for those in the folder of Ceph dashboard and these it will find. And if you have that set up with the host dashboard, you can get it into your Ceph cluster so you can see the dashboard here. So that's pretty much the setup in order to fetch information from your different servers and put them into your Grafana server via Prometheus and then make your Grafana server dashboard available back into Ceph cluster dashboard in order to show information about your hosts and you also have information about your OSDs and how hard or how large they are, what kind of latencies you have on your drives and you also have information about the pools and the usage of the different pools and so on. So you have a lot of interesting information in these graphs and if you run it over time, a longer time, you get more information that you can use in order to figure out if you need to replace a disk, if you need to um, update and create more cluster nodes or perhaps add more disks in order to run smoothly in your environment. So this was what I wanted to talk about today, how to configure Grafana and Prometheus so they can be used as dashboards in your Ceph cluster dashboard setup. Uh, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.